Okay, so have you ever made a project and then you've moved on to the next one and kind of forgot that that other one happened? That's the case for this video and this video series that we're about to start. This project is a historical project, the 1830s, my first time in this era and this crazy look with the huge puffed sleeves, full skirts, and just, it's such a crazy hairstyle era as well. But my look is inspired by the character of Ariel from Little Mermaid. When I saw that the live action Little Mermaid was coming out, I couldn't help but seeing the Little Mermaid character, mostly from the cartoon, as inspired by the 1830s. And yes, this is how long ago this project took place when the live action movie came out last year. But up until this point, I've only shared a very quick making of video and then hardly any pictures on Instagram. But anyway, the inspiration that I saw was those big sleeves, the full skirt, and just overall, it just felt very 1830s. So I was just going off out of the blue on this design. I just thought it looked like it. I'm going to make an historical look and it feels like it just fits for the 1830s. But little did I know, and thanks to everyone who commented and shared this, the original story of Little Mermaid was written in 1836. So whether that's just coincidence, which I don't think it is, it probably means that the original Disney animators saw that and turned that into, or maybe it was the costume designer. Do cartoons have costume designers? They probably do. But anyway, it turns out that it was a great historical era to have an aerial themed look for. And now a year later, we're finally gonna go in depth into all the different parts that it takes to create a historical look. Because with pretty much any era of history, when it comes to fashion, there's so many parts to it. For this particular era, we've got corset, we've got several petticoats or corded petticoats to add volume, um, a small bustle, and then sleeve puffs to keep those sleeves big. And um, let's see what else, a chemise and drawers. So a chemise and a pair of drawers isn't really necessary to the look. I could easily create a historical look without those and just use something else that I have in stock. But because I'm a perfectionist, I tend to start from the very beginning and want to completely create that era of fashion down to the very chemise and drawers. And so that's where we're gonna start off. A chemise is a very basic undergarment and this, but the style of it kind of like changes throughout the eras. And so that's part of why I like to have just a different look for each style era of fashion. My inspiration comes from these few photos and for the pattern, I'm kind of just using different information to design what I think is a good replica slash just inspired by aerial type of undergarment. The base of this chemise is a large rectangle, and then there will be added straps, sleeves, and gussets. All of these other pieces are also rectangle or squares. These are the pieces with some extra strips which will help bind edges. First off, the top edge of the sleeve is gathered up, and then a small strip of fabric is attached. To this, one edge of the strap is sewn. This piece will fold in half, and the folded edge is the neckline edge. The small strip of fabric that was attached to the sleeve first isn't really necessary, but I saw this extra seam in the chemise that I'm copying and decided to do it as well, because why not? Once that strap is folded in half, the raw edge is turned under and sewn in place. I also did some top stitching along the folded edge. We now have the sleeve attached to the strap. Next come the gusset, which is sewn on the under part of the sleeve and then to the body, and it allows extra mobility to the sleeves. This is what it looks like. The body of the chemise will be attached here. But before we attach the body, it's time to finish up the sleeves. 
the lower edge is gathered, then a strip of fabric is attached to bind the raw edge. Now each of these sleeve strap pieces are attached to the body. So this chemise has a square neckline. The straps create the sides and then the body is gathered up at the front and the back, which finishes up the square look. To make the width of the neckline somewhat adjustable, I didn't gather this edge as tightly as it needed to be. From there, I attached a ruffle. and then bound the raw edges, leaving an opening of the binding at center front and back. This was done so I could insert a ribbon and have it come out at that center spot and act as a drawstring, being able to pull the neckline in or loosen it if needed, depending on the outer dress style. The last thing to do was to hem the edge and also just for fun, I added several quarter inch pleats to the skirt. My one annoyance is the ruffle and how it hangs down. I think I could have left a larger seam allowance of that edge, which could have been tacked down to the body and help the ruffle stand up straight, but I'm not sure if that would help, but even so, oh well, it's not going to be seen anyway in the final look. And now we're gonna move on to the drawers. So I know that's, that's a weird, just a weird name for a piece of clothing. But a pair of drawers um, is often, or pretty much always features a split crotch or open crotch. Um, so basically that whole crotch seam is left open and this was for the ease of using the bathroom because they didn't have wear underwear like we think of it today. They wore drawers um, and so they were long enough and full enough to provide modesty. But when you went to the bathroom, you didn't have to hike anything down. So that style of drawers was worn from the beginning that they started wearing drawers, which was I'm pretty sure right around this era. Even in the 1830s, they weren't always worn from my understanding. It was kind of the era that it started happening. That's just a very rough timeline, I believe, of drawers. And then we get to like the early 1900s and we get into like combinations more where it's like a chemise and pair of drawers together, still featuring the open crotch. So bloomers are not drawers. Bloomers are pants worn under the dress for modesty. I don't know where that switch went from. I should probably look this up. From my very limited quick research about the 1920s when corsets started coming out of fashion, that's around when we got rid of the whole drawer situation and just got like underwears or panties. But anyway, drawers, very odd term, but they are a very staple part of historical fashion. And so we're making them for this look. This pattern was drafted by me very quickly and it's made of two pant legs cut on a bias. The side pant seams are sewn together and finished to bind the raw edges. And then the crotch seam is hemmed. For the waistband, I decided on a yoke style. This was prepared getting a couple layers of the waistband sewn together at the top and some top stitching to keep seam allowances in place. Then I could attach the pant legs. The pants slightly overlap at the front and then the very large waist is gathered up. This is then sewn to one edge of the waistband 
and then the second edge is folded on top to contain the raw edges. In this process, I also inserted my ties for a drawstring closure. I started the ties at the side seams and then they exit at the center back. From here, the waistband edge is top stitched down. The last step is to hem the pants and also I added some pleats. Though they didn't work very well, thanks to the pants being cut on a bias and also going from narrower to larger as you're making those pleats. Overall, these are not my favorite pair of drawers, but they're still very usable. They have lots of width and fullness and puffiness and they do the job. And there you have it, the first part of creating this aerial inspired 1830s look. But the next part we're gonna work on to is the stays or the corset. I say stays because I just did an 18th century project. This is kind of the era where it goes from stays to corsets, so stay tuned for that. And as always, a huge thank you to my patrons, YouTube members, and Instagram subscribers. There's so many platforms that you can support me on now if you want to. Thank you for your continued support throughout this whole season. I do have a very exciting project coming this fall, or multiple projects that I can't wait to share, but I've already shared some of that with my subscribers and patrons, like Instagram, YouTube membership, and patrons. And so if you're interested in that, you can join. And with that, remember to learn always, create with passion, and inspire others. And thank you for watching. This video is sponsored by Proven. Proven is the most personalized skincare and their approach is completely backed by data. After taking their three minute quiz, which analyzes 47 factors about you, they create three simple products, a cleanser, a day cream, which has SPF and a night cream. It's a three step process to simplify and elevate your skincare routine. So I've honestly just never developed a good skincare routine. I basically just wash my face and throw on some cream at night that's it. I just haven't taken the time to research and figure out what would work best. With Proven, within three minutes, they formulated something just for me and my lifestyle. I've been using their products for about two weeks now and I've already noticed that my skin is much smoother and clearer. The best part is I haven't really changed my routine. I still wash my face and put on cream, but the products I'm using have been tailor-made specifically for my skin, my location, and my concerns. Click the link in my description box and use the code Bellame to get your first personalized proven system for $99 for a limited time. That's 50% off the regular retail price. Thanks again to Proven for sponsoring today's video.